our program here on time. I'll kindly ask uh, our brother, our national coordinator, Johnson Washira, to open for us with a word of prayer. Uh, Brother Francis, uh, I think uh, uh, Washira changed. I was the one to start with a word of prayer, and then Washira will conclude. Um, Apologies. It, it's well. <laughs> uh, welcome all. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for this opportunity to dine with you. And we want to thank you for all the uh, students who have gone through this uh, program of SALT, and we want to thank you for uh, the end of uh, this program, but the beginning of service. And Lord, we commit ourselves into your hands as we sit at your feet uh, to minister to us today. We commit the program uh, under the blood of Jesus, and we also pray for all the gadgets we are using, we cover them with the blood of Jesus and we thank you for our key speaker tonight. We, we appreciate that Lord, you have given us fathers with a burden of servanthood in the continent of Africa. And Lord, in this season of Purim, we pray that you will give us a company of Esther's and Mordecai's and that you make us part of that company Lord, as we graduate the students today, we pray that Lord, you make us the company of men and women who will rescue the nations and our governments and our institutions from the spirits of Haman, which has befallen our nations. Father, we thank you and we bless you and we honor your name and we lift up the name of Jesus above all the other Hamans across our continent and even in our lives and families and in our institutions, we proclaim that Jesus is Lord. And we pray that Lord minister to us this evening. We bless you and we honor you. In Jesus' holy name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Over to you. Thank you, um, Sister our Mom Grace. Thank you for that prayer. Um, once again, I uh, want to welcome you all to our SOT graduation 2021. And uh, uh, kindly allow me to take you through an overview of the SOT program uh, before we proceed. And we thank that our key guest speaker is already with us. So please kindly allow me to share my screen and look at an overview of the SOT program 2021. Uh, welcome to SORT Graduation 2021, a program facilitated by the Kenya House of Prayer. Uh, Allow me to tell you who we are. SOT is the Sondulas African Leadership Training, SOT Institute, which is a non-profit, non-governmental institution, an international organization with headquarters in Accra, Ghana. Currently, operations of the SOT Institute are in Kenya, Uganda, and Nigeria. The Kenyan chapter where we are having graduation today started in 1997 and developed in 2008. And since then, we have had annual training taking place. Sondulas is a Greek word meaning pharaohs of the servant of the same servant as used in Matthew chapter 18, verse number uh, 28. The aim of the Institute is to train, build and encourage servant leaders for all levels of public life all over Africa, according to Acts 13.3. We 
train leaders to apply biblical dynamics to leadership and governance. And our guiding scripture is Psalm 78, verse 70 to 72. The aim is also to have the readers have the capacity to hear from God and know the redemptive purpose of God for their nation and institutions and have the ability to motivate people to realize those uh, purposes. Let me now give you an overview of the SOT program Kenya in 2021. 20, 20, SOT Institute Kenya led 22 weeks training program and due to COVID-19, the lessons were learned virtually via Zoom. This enabled us to combine both Nairobi and Eldoret classes into one. And as a result, we had registration from diaspora and other towns in Kenya. Evening classes were conducted once a week, every Thursday between 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. The training started on that of September 2020 to February 2021. A total of 61 individuals registered for the course. And those in individuals, uh, we had 49 females and 12 males registering for the course. And the nationalities of our students, we had 56 from Kenya, two from UK, two from USA, and one from Gambia. The career distribution of our students, we had uh, pastors and church uh, leaders, we had four students, entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs and business people, we had 21 students, professionals in private corporates were 15, university lecturers were eight, and we had 12 civil servants and one student in the class during the training. In conclusion, such certificate has been a blessing to the alumni as it has been acknowledged as a big plus during recruitment, just to cite a few, hiring of director of IT in a placeto, the SOT certificate was a differentiator and it gave him a, a big plus. Hiring of a vice chancellor of a local university, the alumni presented the, the SOT certificate and it was a big plus. Hiring of a senior officer in the electoral body, also the SOT certificate was a differentiator and gave the candidate a big plus and was recruited for that position. So we are therefore encouraging all of us to register for this unique course because it does not only train on management, but it focuses more on leadership and leadership uh, is a, a key requirement for senior positions in in government and in private companies and so program is equipping our students to address issues of institutions and also to lead in government, in, in churches and in all areas of our lives. So we are encouraging all of you who have not registered with SORT to kindly register with us for this unique course. Allow me to thank and congratulate all the graduates who have made it and today is their day as they, uh, as they graduate. So thank you very much for the graduates. And now allow me to ask our technical team, Brother William, to share some of the uh, big online testimonies from our students. And I want to acknowledge all the students for sharing with us their online video testimonies. In the interest of time, we will only share at least three or four, and all the other online testimonies will be our technical team is working on them to make them into a video and we'll share with all the students so that they can benefit from the testimony of their fellow students. Thank you very much. Allow me now to hand over to our brother Hudson Bugasi. Thank you. Brother William, if you could share a, 
some of the testimonies online. Okay, thank you. Hi, uh, um, praise the Lord. My name is Gladys Inzofu, and uh, I'm just happy to express my gratitude uh, to all the management and administration of Salt Institute in Kenya. I just want to say that God Almighty, King of Kings, the Lord of hosts, he's been so marvelous, he's been so wonderful. Him alone, glory to him, who has connected us, who has made us to come to the end of this course since September 2020 to 2021. He is God and he shall be God. To the, all the glory is unto him. Thank you so much for all that you have dedicated your time, you have dedicated your lives to be able to share this knowledge with other people. And I want to glorify God for each and every one of you. One of the things that uh, stood out for me during this uh, course, first of all, is the assortment or rather the, the facilitators. The facilitators came from all walks of the nation of Kenya. The facilitators are well trained, well uh, rooted into what they were teaching and you could get the love of what they were teaching. You could get the knowledge of what they were teaching. You could get the passion that they had in everything that they were teaching. And it, it, this is something that stood out for me that I, I cannot leave out. I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you for dedicating yourself. Thank you for dedicating your time and just leaving all the beautiful things, leaving your family behind just to put this knowledge into us. My prayer is that this group or the people that you are training, we shall take that mantle and run with it. For me, the course themselves was uh, the foundation, the thrones. Oh my, I don't even know where to start, but one of the things that I'm now running with is uh, rectifying my foundation, rectifying all the altars, making sure that all the thrones that have been used in my family, I'm trying to find out all the information to make sure that my foundation is well set, to make sure that my foundation is cleaned. And this is one of the things that have been uh, uh, speaking about in the ministries to the people that are, we share the ministry with and telling them we need to cleanse our foundation because without foundation even if we build the house the house will not stand and i believe this is the thing that has been that is happening to the church it's an eye opener for the church of christ now to start working on the foundations because many of the many of our churches are built on foundation and there are many thrones that exist in those churches and we believe we are the ones uh, supposed to bring this light to many Christians that are, uh, I mean, they are involved in the ministry work. And even if it's not ministry, the people who are just uh, the shepherds of, uh, of, of, of this ministry. Uh, my name is Catherine Mwangi. And I'm so thankful to God for having an opportunity to have been part of the SALT class 2020 to 2021. And I thank God for, uh, for the much that we've learned. It has been a rich experience. So thank you so much, uh, the SALT fraternity. Thank you so much, Group 6, my group that was very encouraging, and the fellow students. Um... This is the hardest thing I think uh, we have had to do during the SALT class. Uh, uh, how do you summarize in a very short time and very few points such a rich experience and such insight that you have received so far? But uh, anyway, I have two things that uh, stand out for me. One of the things that really stood out for me was understanding thrones, which was uh, lectured by Brother William. Probably it was because this is a, a kind of a very new concept to me. It is the second time that I'm learning about thrones. And I learned uh, about understanding the throne of God 
the throne of man and Satan's throne. And I also learned just how influential thrones are in leadership and in lives of people. I had never looked at it like that. And I learned that um, God's, I, I know this, uh, but it was such a confirmation that God's throne is, um, is the founded on justice and righteousness. And that the enemy tries to use the thrones uh, to influence for his manipulation to achieve his ambition. And God desires of us to, to represent him wherever we are, whichever level we are doing, that whichever level we are in, that our foundations have to be righteousness and justice. And also the truth that um, how you actually sit on the throne reflects what the source of your throne is and what the source of your power and influence is. Such were the fundamental truths that we learned and the truth that I'm going to take with me, it was a lesson that was very deep and very broad. And I would need actually to go back to my notes and read again so that I can understand that. I took a principle from Understanding Thrones. And it was from the book, I think it was a quote or a book by Dr. Miles that our brother William read. It said that an army of a ship led by a lion will always defeat an army of a lion led by a sheep. That is very profound for me. And that whatever area I am working on, all with, I am supposed to be a hallmark of righteousness and justice as my Lord is. That is another principle that I'll take with me from understanding thrones. Another lesson uh, topic that uh, stood out for me was by Helen Akoth. This was innovation and creativity in distress. And I learned a few things using the study of the book of Nehemiah and a bit of Ezra. First, bring God into the situation. I've never seen it like that before. And then, despite the circumstance, do not conform to the pattern of the world. Seek God in that hard circumstance. Do your research and then uh, mobilize, organize, and motivate, and then uh, withhold, withstand, even under the opposition, and then be accountable. Those are the things that I learned under that uh, teaching of innovation and creativity in different circumstances. And from there, I, uh, and also across board, when it comes to the core values, across board, a few values kept on inter interchanging. And that is prayer, integrity, accountability, and <clears throat> mentorship. Either you're mentoring somebody or you're being mentored. Those are the core values. And the last thing is, uh, so how will I apply what I've learned? First, I've already applied one. Because of the principle I've learned, um, I actually bold, I was bold enough or courageous enough to actually take up a position in my church, uh, or to be part of the core team of the prayer team in my church, something that I would not have done before. But from what I've learned about being a leader, and a leader is supposed to be somebody of action and who brings as an agent of change and as an agent who influences things to happen. I have been able to take the courage and the, and the bold step to do that. Another one is um, I was not very much interested in politics until we did thrones. And I realized how much influence there is in thrones, how much I can influence actually the leadership, how much uh, about allowing God to be about aligning myself with the throne of God so that I can be able to accomplish the purposes of God. So that made me also start getting a bit more interested in politics and also in my community. And just in a nutshell, when we had a guest speaker, Bishop Oginde, he said something. He said that uh, by the time you take an office, you should always be planning your exit plan and your succession plan. Again, truths that I have had before, but I had not really known how to apply them in my life. And these are the lessons that I've learned. As I said, there is so much and so much richness. You don't even know what to summarize, what to say, and what not to say. But I'm grateful for the opportunity to have learned all this. 
And again, I say thank you, salt. Thank you, salt fraternity. We are definitely not the same people that came in. As we leave and as we graduate, we thank God because I believe that God will use us for the glory of his name. Thank you so much and God bless you. Brother Francis. Thank you very much, Brother William, for the for the testimony. Uh, allow me now to hand over the program to our brother Hudson to pick up from there. Welcome, Brother Hudson. Thank you very much, um, Brother Francis. Thank you, William, for the great testimonies, and thank you, all graduates of Salt. The Kenya 2020 2021. Congratulations. We thank God for you and thank you for the patience and resilience and commitment to come this far. We are very, very grateful and thank you also for the faculty for the great work and the office. Mine is to introduce our speaker for the night. And our speaker, as we have been duly informed, is Barista Emeka Wampa. Um, Barista Emeka Wampa has worked as a teacher. He is married to pharmacist Buddy Wampa, and together they serve the Lord on the continent. He is a qualified lawyer, um, though he no longer practices, but he did practice law. He served also in his student days at the university. He served as the president of the Evangelical Christian Union at the University of Ileife in Nigeria in the early 70s. He also served as a, a former pro Chancellor and Chairman of the Governing Council, Abia State University in Nigeria. Our speaker has traveled and ministered on the five continents and offered quite a number of books. And um, I would welcome you to seek out and read those books. He has also served as a missionary in the country of Ghana for a very long time, but he's now back in Nigeria, in Abuja. Currently, he's the chairman, Intercessors for Africa, who have hosted the SALT program through Kenya House of Prayer in Kenya. And he's also the chairman and founder, is a vision bearer. The Lord spoke to him in 1997 very clearly about this program, and that is the genesis of the Sondulas African Leaders Training Program. And so you are hearing from the very, very person that God gave this vision and saw tonight, we are so privileged to have Barisameka Wampa speak to us. He's a father, he's um, to many on this continent, and yes, he has his own children and a grandfather too. And so we are very honored that you could take your time and be with us and uh, come and give a charge to our students, our participants. And so we are very grateful. He serves the Lord in different leadership capacities on the continent. And so, Please give a hand in whatever way you can do it online. Let's welcome Barista Emeka Wampa to come and speak to us tonight. You're welcome, sir. Yeah, Brother Hudson, thank you very much. And uh, thank you to the faculty of uh, the Sondulos African Leadership Training a program in uh, Kenya. Thank you for uh, your kindness in inviting me to have this singular honor of uh, speaking at this graduation uh, ceremony. Um, so let me begin with the protocol formalities. Uh, let me stand on all the protocols established. Uh, and I want to thank the leadership of the SALT program, the leadership of the Kenya House of Prayer, uh, the registrar of this institute, graduates of the SALT program who are graduating tonight, 
and friends, family, and relatives. Uh, first of all, I want to begin by thanking God for keeping us alive through the COVID-19 pandemic with all of its problems, pains, and uh, fears. Uh, this is something that has shaken the whole world leaders, nations, companies, governments, institutions, education, health, all aspects of life in uh, various nations have been shaken. Secondly, I want to congratulate all of you who have successfully gone through this course I had the privilege of listening just as we were preparing to start the program to one or two ladies. And uh, again, when the program started, I listened to two more. Uh, they've been wonderful and very clear in their uh, remarks as to which particular cause affected them the most and every one of them kept running through the whole of the courses, then they were single out one. Uh, incidentally, I didn't hear any of the men, and I'm hoping that the men understood something. So congratulations to all of you. You have taken a very strategic and significant step towards becoming a leader that God can co-labor with to establish his plans and purposes uh, in the nation of Kenya. Some years ago, in 1997, the Lord told me in Addis Ababa the following. He said, you and your friends have been praying for Africa for the past 24 years. You have problems which prayer alone by itself cannot solve. The foundations of your nations were not laid with the scriptures. You do not have seven leaders in government. And the leaders you have do not know how to apply biblical dynamics to leadership and governance. And I asked the Lord, what should we do? He said simply, train them. And we began to seek the face of the Lord and to study the scriptures, the Bible, to gather the material uh, for the training. We began the program and incidentally, one of our first sessions was held at um, Bagati. Uh, in Kenya a few years ago. And if I remember correctly, uh, a government minister conducted the opening ceremony of that particular program. Your training is to equip you to become leaders, servants, shepherds, who will serve the people wherever you work with integrity of heart. It is also to equip you to serve and guide the people with skillfulness of hands. Now the question will be, what do we do? Just like the people asked John the Baptist when he began to preach, he finished his one prayer, one preaching session and the soldiers came, and what shall we do? Uh, the tax collectors came, and what shall we do? Now, let me, in answering that question generally, take you through a very familiar scripture. In fact, when the gentleman who was, uh, who started the program this evening uh, began, he made reference to it in his notes. And that is Psalm 78, 
Psalm 78, verses 70 to 72. He also chose David his servant and took him from the sheepfolds. From following the ewes that had young, he brought him to shepherd Jacob, his people, and Israel, his inheritance. So he shepherded them, and according to the integrity of his heart, and guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. It's interesting that God actually chose David uh, as an example to show us what it means to serve people with integrity of heart and skillfulness of hands. There is a whole lot uh, that we can learn from David. Uh, we need to read the story of David, the experiences of David, uh, the character of David, the prayers of, of David, and his relationship with God. That's another matter entirely, uh, so that we can be well-rounded and well-informed, well-built up uh, in the knowledge of this man who is such an example. Now, from that scripture, let me point out the fact that God has chosen you, the glad ones, to be leaders. And wherever he chooses to locate or situate you, you are responsible to him. You are responsible to him. Yes, you may be elected, you may be appointed, you may be seconded, you may be uh, promoted, however it is that you get there. Please understand that you are responsible uh, to God. Now, notice secondly that God chose you to be his servant. God deliberately, by his wisdom, chose you to be his uh, servant. In other words, he wants you to seek to do his will. Uh, he wants you to seek to be his co-worker. Now here, let me just stay a little bit. Wherever we serve God, not just in church, in pulpit ministry, whether as doctors, as engineers, as pharmacists, as lawyers, as whatever, whatever the profession is, um, scientists, lecturers, administrators, please, it is important that we seek to be God's co-workers. God's co-laborers. So the question will always be, what do we do? Lord, how do we do this? How do you want us to, uh, how do you want us to go through this together? Because when you know the mind of God, then you know uh, what to do, how to do it so that he will lead you we know this prayer, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, when you are sheep, even though you're a leader, you have the position. You need to find out from God, where do we go from here? How do we manage this? What do we do about this situation? And then we need to seek to exercise responsibility towards him. Yes, there are rules, there are expectations, there are deadlines, but let's not ever forget that we need to always seek to exercise responsibility towards God. 
And we also need to understand his will that undergirds the whole thing. What does God want out of this? Many times because we want to earn money, we want to earn promotion, we want to please somebody, nothing bad in any of those things at all. Please don't misunderstand me. But the bottom line is to see and to hear what the will of God is in that situation. That's a deeper level of relationship with God. And if you ask God, you wait on him long enough, uh, he will tell you. And when he tells you, you'll be the wiser. And when you walk with him in wisdom, you discover that you enjoy your job, no matter how difficult it is, much better. Because you're going to be working with God and working not just by the grace of God, but with the joy of the Lord. So you will always have strength for that job, whatever it is that you do. Now, number three, we need to understand that it was God who took you through all the terms of life. Look at your life as an individual, where you're coming from where you were born, your parents, your relatives, primary school, secondary school, teacher training college, university, whatever it is you've been through, whether you passed once immediately or you failed and passed again, or whether you know you were dropped, whether they canceled your promotion, whether they uh, planned against you, whatever it is that you went through uh, before you got to this particular point, uh, at this particular point in time. God, it is who took you through all of those turns in life and brought, brought you here. Brought you here. So when you look at all of that, God must have a plan, a purpose in doing all of that. All the experiences you've had, God must have a plan and a purpose. Now, number five, God has brought you to be a shepherd, to take care of, to lead, to look after the needs uh, of the people, the institution, and to be sacrificial in doing so. Every shepherd must, in some way or the other, sacrifice, inconvenience themselves, go through some hardship, difficulty, self-denial, in order to move whatever work they do uh, forward. Now, number six, please, understand and never ever forget that the people you serve, the people you lead, are God's people uh, in university, in sociology, in politics. They teach you about the masses. They talk about the electorate. They talk about the plebeians. And they talk about various classifications of people. Well, for some reason, those classifications have stuck. But please, never forget these two words that I'm going to mention. I'm sure you know them from the scriptures. The first is that everybody you deal with, whether the person is born again or not, they are God's inheritance. Inheritance. In other words, God has a stake in each person, in each human being. God has a stake. And secondly, they are God's inheritance. Uh, sorry, they are God's investment. Inheritance, investment. Inheritance, investment. None of us has ever manufactured a human being before. And I'm talking about a live one. Yeah, we make babies, but that's all we can do, feed them. But to make that human being live 
eat, digest, grow, continue to walk, and the heart continues to beat every single moment for life, 80, 90, sometimes a hundred and something years without stopping. That's something. And so let's never forget that the people we are serving are God's inheritance. God expects a return, some profit, some work, some achievement from them. And number eight, you have got to be obedient to God in shepherding the people. Uh, we, that's why we have good and bad leaders. There are leaders, yes, they get there, and then they, they're, they're not obedient at all to God in any way. But now that you've been through this course and going forward, we need to be obedient to God. And that's a lot. Throughout the scriptures, there are many shades, many uh, descriptions, many manifestations of obedience to God. What do we do? How do we do it? When do we do it? Occasionally, God might tell you why we need to do it. Number nine, we need to bring integrity of heart. Integrity. Integrity of heart is very important. That means in the effort that you put in, the standards you maintain, the ethics that you manifest, the best practices that you show, all of that are components of integrity. Your yes is yes, your no is no. Number 10, we need to guide the people, whoever is working with us or behind us, we need to guide the people according to the will of God. Not take advantage of them, not fleece them, not kill them, not destroy them. And then number 11, we need to apply skillfulness of hands, training, skill, learning, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Now, having said that, let me quickly conclude this little discussion with you by mentioning something that may sound new, but um, it is something that we've all got to prepare for. You see, we are at a particular point. We have reached a stage in our walk with God on the African continent. Notice I said the African continent. Where as church, as the church, as believers, we need to take responsibility for the plan of God in Africa, in the world going forward. America has stumbled. You know what happened in the last election. You know what has happened to prophecy and prophesying throughout the last time and the various oddities that occurred. I don't want to go into all the details, but in so far as that has happened, the church in America has stumbled. And it is now moving. The plan of God is now moving for Africa to take responsibility to begin to be brought forward, to carry the responsibility of God's plan. And that is why I just want to share with you 
uh, the scripture in Acts chapter 15, verses uh, 15 to 18. Acts chapter 15, verses 15 to 18. Now, this is what it says. It says, and with these words, and with this, the words of the prophets agree just as it is written. Verse 16, after this, I will return and will rebuild the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. I will rebuild its ruins. I will set it up so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord. Even all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord who does all these things, known to God from eternity are all his works. In very simple language, David was the man who took the ark of the law, if you read the Old Testament scriptures, from Gibeon, where kings would normally, you know, where he would go and ask the priests, the mind of God, they would go before the ark of the covenant with the effort, and they will find out what God says and tell him. But then the time came when, for some reason, David went and arranged for that act to be brought from Gibeon to Jerusalem, where the seat of governance was, the seat of leadership was, where the headquarters, the capital of the nation was. So that in other words, the presence of God would oversee, over, you know, overarch the running of government. Instead of going and asking God questions, he brought the presence of God represented by the ark to look at the discussions, the decisions, the lawmaking, the judicial aspect, and everything. And that lasted for a while. And suddenly in the New Testament, when, of all things, the leadership of the church, the Council of Jerusalem, was discussing whether the uh, Gentiles should do this or do that or be uh, circumcised and so on as some people went out there to teach them. God just threw his agenda on the ground through the junior brother of Jesus Christ. And that became a part of the discussion and a prophetic word from the book of Amos was now brought into Acts chapter 15. So what does that mean to us in short? Why am I telling you this? You see, one of the things that God is going to do in addition to bringing the church before the rapture to the place where the church is without wrinkle, without blemish and without spot, that's one of the projects that Jesus is going to do to prepare the church for the rapture. In addition to that, God is going to perform this one. He is going to move through Christians move through believers, especially those of you who have been trained to carry the presence of God, to manifest the ethics of God, to bring the wisdom, the power, the understanding, the knowledge, the glory, the zeal of the Lord of hosts in every area of responsibility and authority. God is looking for co-laborers. So it's not a question of, I work in the Ministry of Public Affairs, I work in the Electoral Commission, and that's it. No, no, no. We are going now, we're going to be manifesting, not political activism, not politicizing scriptures. No, 
The Americans have done that and it hasn't worked quite well. They've come some distance. But the life of Christ, the life of God, the zeal of God, the truth of God, the New Testament mind of Christ is going to be made manifest wherever we serve. So that, and God says, I will do it. It's not like you people are going to do it. No, he says, I will return. I will raise up. I will rebuild and so on. So God is now looking for graduates of Salt Institute, Kenya, 2021. God is looking for Christians around Africa. And that's one of the areas where the lecturers, the facilitators, they've spoken so wonderfully about you. You need to extend and expand your understanding to see how we would need to train hundreds of thousands of believers at whatever level to co-labor with God, to manifest, 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 to manifest, that word, to manifest, so that anybody who comes in touch with you, wherever you may be seen, you are manifesting the life of God through whatever service that you render. In whatever institution, God will need us to commit ourselves to rebuild the tabernacle of David. That's one of the things that God wants to do before he takes us uh, in the rapture to be with him. So God bless you, my friends. And those of you who have uh, successfully completed this course, congratulations. And for the faculty in Kenya, thank you very much for producing this bunch of uh, graduates. And I'm praying that God will touch some more men and some more women to enlist in the next batch of uh, SALT students. God bless you. Back to uh, Brother Hudson. Thank you and God bless. I mean, I'll pass over to our MC, Francis Kibue. Thank you. Thank you so much, Barista Emeka, for speaking to us. We received that word. Over to you, uh, Brother Kibue. Thank you very much, Brother Hudson. Uh, we will now move over and I'll hand over to the registrar, our sister Nancy Adote, to take us to the next part of the program. Sister Nancy. Thank you so much, Brother Francis. And thank you so much, Barista Emeka. And to all graduates, congratulations. Uh, this is the 14th graduation of SALT. And at this point, I would like to request uh, Brother Nzugula kindly project. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And once again, uh, we are all welcome to the 14th graduation of SALT Institute, the Kenyan chapter. So this is the graduation of uh, SALT class 2020-2021. Continue. Uh, we had 61 students, and out of the 61 students, uh, we'll ha we are having a few graduating today. So one of the qualifications for our graduation included 
um, each student needed to complete at least 75%, at least more uh, of the 75% of the sessions that we had. We had 22 sessions. Uh, so out of the 22 sessions, at least they should have attended 17. And that makes about 75, 77%. The other criteria for you to qualify um, to graduate included the submission of at least 11 assignments. Therefore, we have a few who are graduating. These are 49 who met the requirement above. And then we have 12 students who still need to work with the office in different areas of completion. So in recognition of your successful completion of the servant leadership training course, which ran from September 2020 to February 2021, I hereby award these certificates to the following leaders as per the charge and commission pronounced by the chairman. The certificates are arranged in alphabetical order, so no worries. Uh, the first person is Agnes Cheptum Kipingor. Congratulations, Agnes. We now have Agnes N.K. Wambua. Congratulations, Agnes, on your achievement. Next is Agri Oyengo Ambani. Congratulations, Agri. Next is Alan Kiombe. Congratulations, Alan. followed by Anna Kaveke Muoki. Congratulations, Anna. We now have Anne Chepkori Koske. Congratulations, Anne. Followed by Beatrice Awar Otieno. Congratulations, Beatrice. Next is Betty Maina. Congratulations, Betty. Next is Caroline Igoki Mwangi. Congratulations, Caroline. Followed by Catherine N. Derry. Congratulations, Catherine. Next is Charity Chemjor. Congratulations, Charity. Next is Charles Kisigwa Ikutwa. Congratulations, Charles. Followed by Cecilia Ndenya Muticia. Congratulations, Cecilia. Next is Shiro Mugidi. Congratulations, Shiro. We now have Dr. Lona Wafula. Congratulations, Dr. Then Emily Kangai Ibere. Congratulations, Emily. Next is Emily Wamboy Ndoho. Congratulations, Emily. Followed by Emma Kajuju Kiogora. Congratulations, Emma. 
<laughs> Next is Ethel Ross S. Wilson. Congratulations, Wilson. Followed by Eunice Chepkorir Koech. Congratulations, Eunice. Eva M. Hussein. Congratulations, Eva. Next is Evelyn Nyambura. Congratulations, Evelyn. Felistas M. Muticia. Congratulations, Felistas. Next is Frank O. Ochomo. Congratulations, Frank. Next is Grace W. Washuri. Congratulations, Grace. Coming next is Inzofu Gladys Lokale. Congratulations, Gladys. After Gladys, we have Irene Chepkoech Biomdo. Congratulations, Irene. Joan Karen Osok, congratulations, Joan. Next is Justus Kipsang Cheruyot, congratulations, Justus. Next is Katutu Ndeveni. Congratulations, Katutu. Next is Leonard Atia Misango. Congratulations, Leonard. Next is Leroy Moasela Nzugula. Congratulations, Leroy. Followed by Lillian Atieno Oziambo. Congratulations, Lillian. Next is Margaret Mackenzie. Congratulations, Margaret. Next is Mariamu Amusabi Amusala. Congratulations, Mariamu. Next is Marie J. Mendy. Congratulations, Marie. Then we have Nancy and Musaki. Congratulations, Nancy. Ogla Jepkoech Twitter. Congratulations, Ogla. Next is Peter Kiplagat Mayo. Congratulations, Peter. Next is Petronila Mlale Magenyi. Congratulations, Petronila. We now have Rebecca Cherob Mukenye. Congratulations, Rebecca. Next 
Next is Rose W. Kariuki. Congratulations, Rose. Followed by Ruth Njeri Irungu. Congratulations, Ruth. Sophie Anyango Opio. Congratulations, Sophie. Then we have Stella Cheraisi Corrid. Congratulations, Stella. We now call Stephen Mudoka Ngala. Congratulations, Stephen. Then Terry Mula Adagi. Congratulations, Terry. Followed by Turfosa Hapisu. Congratulations, Turfosa. Next is Vivian Kibel. Congratulations, Vivian. And finally, we have Wilfred Karia Mbuki. Congratulations, Wilfred. Now, to all those who have graduate, graduated today, congratulations once again, and we now welcome you to the SALT alumni. Thank you, thank you, and God bless you, SALT 14 graduates. Now you are graduates, congratulations. Thank you so much. That was just great. That was just great. And from here, I would like to now hand over to our brother Hudson to take us to the next point. I think it's um, our brother Washira who takes over now. Washira. Okay. Washira, brother Washira. Uh, thank you. Uh, Sister Nancy, thank you, Brother Hudson. Uh, thank you, everybody. I think now we are coming to the end of the today's program, but uh, we want to take note of the fact that we are coming to an end of a very successful uh, training, and uh, we want to thank God uh, for this far, uh, from September up to this point, we know that it has taken his grace and uh, his mighty hand, uh, protection and the preservation for all of us who are tuned in and uh, those who have been on the training. Uh, we also want to acknowledge that uh, we are having this graduation through a virtual platform. And uh, for us to come this far, we had to seek uh, that God will be able to sustain this platform. So we want to, as we conclude the meeting, to say that let all the glory and honor be unto him. Allow me, uh, in the interest of time, just to acknowledge that uh, there are people who have been behind this, uh, let me take this moment to really appreciate our guest speaker, um, Barista Emeka Nompa. Um, I do not want to go through the uh, introduction because uh, Hanson actually did that, but uh, I want to describe him as uh, our mentor. Uh, we are where we are uh, because of his contribution to the ministry of intercession in this uh, continent and beyond and uh, has begun uh, speaking to us 
you also took note that uh, he is uh, what you can describe as the founder of this training. And uh, we want Lide to thank God for him uh, and his wife, Bande, and the family. And uh, we want to appreciate that uh, it was a sacrifice. Uh, uh, we have been longing for this. I'm particularly delighted for him. Uh, so we are very thankful, uh, our chairman, and uh, the Lord bless you so much. Allow me also to take note of our facilitators. Um, if you listen to the testimonies, uh, you'll appreciate that uh, they did this in love. They gave uh, themselves. They made sacrifices. They committed time. And uh, I can tell you that they were not doing that for a pay. <laughs> and uh, we can actually appreciate that they are the first uh, servant leaders before they trained us also to join the servant leadership. Uh, from Grand Jones and uh, the family members who have joined you, we are delighted uh, that you chose uh, to be part of this class. Actually, to me, I'll see it as God calling because uh, um, our chairman has already uh, uh, talked to us and, and you can actually uh, appreciate that this is not the end. You need to practice what you have learned. Indeed, God has purpose for each one of us so we are very happy that if you did not join uh, this class, uh, I'm sure that uh, maybe you will not be here uh, for this particular function. So we appreciate you and uh, allow me to say congratulations to all those who have graduated today. Allow also me to thank those who participated, even those who are going to take a bit of time to uh, complete the course, we really appreciate. And uh, even some of them joined and they were not able to complete the course, maybe because of the uh, various engagements. So we really appreciate all those who participated. Now to the faculty, uh, to those who coordinated, uh, to the Kenya House of Prayer that uh, provided the logistics, uh, to the technical team, uh, you appreciate from this function that a lot has actually has gone into the uh, uh, technical aspect of uh, this particular presentation. So we are very thankful for uh, all your contributions. And now in the interest of time, allow me to say thank you for uh, my fellow colleagues and the brethren, wherever you are joined in. Uh, from this nation, outside, wherever you are, uh, we appreciate your company. I, I trust that uh, if you have not gone through this training, you are already planning on uh, how you're going to join the next one when it is actually announced. So uh, with those uh, few remarks in a way of vote thanks, uh, I wish that uh, we can... Uh, um, bring uh, the meeting to an end and uh, allow me to close the meeting uh, with the one brother of the Yes, yes um, Brother Hudson. Just a quick one. I think it will be in order to ask the chairman just to pray a prayer of commissioning for the graduates, if you don't mind, if you can ask him, please. Okay. Uh, our chairman, if we are still there, um, I want to extend that request that uh, uh, you pray for the graduates as a way of commissioning them as they go, uh, they go out to the uh, mission field. Uh, so welcome, uh, Barista Emeka. All right, let us pray then. Let's pray for all of our graduates. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you for your faithfulness in choosing these ones who have successfully undergone this SALT course. 
Lord, from the foundation of the world, you chose them and you knew what you were going to use them for. And Lord, in the books written in heaven, in the records in heaven, we want to ask that you would look into those writings, those records in heaven and Lord, whatever it is that it is now time to begin to bring to pass, to establish in their lives, that you will commission your angels and with the ministry of the Holy Spirit, begin to walk in them, both to will and to do of your own good pleasure. Lord, we pray your prayer. We pray over them. We ask that you would protect them you would help them, you will guide them, you will instruct them, you will teach them, and Lord, you will uphold them with your right hand of righteousness. And Lord, that you will take them from this point further, give them grace, open their minds, open their understanding, uh, so that every day as they go to work, as they do whatever they do, they will understand, they will see, to be clear to them that they are working with you. Lord, help them to realize that it is now time for them to be collaborators with you. And so, Lord, we ask that you would lift up the light of your countenance upon them. Be gracious to them. Walk in them and help them. Uphold them. And now, Lord, we dedicate them to you, to Kenya. We dedicate them to the calling with which you have called them. We dedicate both the men and the women, we dedicate their families uh, to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, our God and our Father. We commission them for everything now that it will please you to begin to bring them into. And Lord, we pray that you will release upon them the anointing, the gifts, the power, the ability to do all that it will please you for them to do. Thank you, Father. For we have prayed with thanksgiving in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And everybody saying, Amen. 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 So thank you, uh, everybody. Uh, shalom. Uh, so we have come to the end of uh, uh, this uh, graduation. And uh, I wish that uh, the Lord bless you. Amen. Okay, thank you. I know there are those who are joined in the YouTube, but I think uh, on their behalf, those who are in the Zoom, maybe we can uh, all join in the last ones of the grace together so that uh, we can get to hear uh, some of us who are here. So we can join in the ones of the grace as uh, we do our benediction. And uh, now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ and the love of, love God, of God, 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 fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and with us now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. God bless you.